Let's get Brexit done. Everyone warned that it would be the beginning of the end, that the status quo was set to change, and that Brexit would bring about the collapse of London's powerful financial industry sooner or later. It was said that Frankfurt, Paris, or even Amsterdam would succeed in unseating the power of the city, along with New York, one of the two most important financial centers on the planet. To give you an idea, approximately 2.5 times more dollars are traded in the United Kingdom than in the United States. Now, Brexit is already a reality, and that has made us here on Visual Politic, along with our friends at Value School, ask a few questions. What influence does the City of London really have in global finance? Is the city as under threat as its critics claim? Why is London, along with New York, said to be the great financial capital of the world. Well, let's get started. Strictly speaking, the City of London, also known as the City or the Square Mile, is made up of the 33 boroughs that make up Greater London, a district with some special characteristics. For example, the city has its own government and much more autonomy than the other boroughs that make up Greater London. In fact, the city's municipal corporation has 2,000 years of self-government behind it. It is the oldest democratic formation on the planet. Of course, we are talking about a somewhat unusual democracy, because in the city, it's not only the physical residents that vote, but also the companies through their employees. In fact, due to this arrangement, the companies have more votes than the residents themselves. In any case, if the city is known for one thing, it is for specializing in the financial industry and giving its name to one of the two most important financial centers in the world. Between the city and the Canary Wharf area, they have managed to get nearly 800,000 people working in highly skilled jobs linked to the financial industry. And that expands to 2.3 million nationwide. It is what many call the last vestige of the British Empire. So how important is London really in the international financial scene? What role does it play exactly? Well, to answer these questions, I think the best thing to do is to put some facts on the table. Thanks to the city, financial services bring the UK a trade surplus of more than $80 billion each year. More than $100 billion if we take into account related professional services, such as law firms or consultancy firms. Neither Singapore, Switzerland, or even the United States of America come close to this figure. Just take a look. If you're a government or a large company and you want to secure a large loan, you may have to go through London. Nearly one-fifth of all international bank lending and over 12% of all listed international bonds originate from the United Kingdom. And even more striking, more than 40% of the world's currency trading also passes through here. More than $2.4 trillion are traded every day. Put another way, 2.5 times more dollars are traded in the United Kingdom than in the United States. While the United States is also the largest yuan trader outside of China. And that's not all. With more than 200 established banks, London's financial industry is one of the world's largest in private banking, fund management, insurance, and financial derivatives. Derivatives that, for example, have also made London one of the main trading centers for commodities and energy. Then, in terms of number of hedge funds, London is the second capital of the world behind New York. And if we're talking about venture capital, the British capital is only surpassed internationally by San Francisco, the Big Apple, and Boston. All this, Visual Politics fans, is precisely what explains why this industry generates a net income of more than $100 billion each year for the United Kingdom. But at this point, many of you may be wondering, but why the city? Why has London become such an important financial center? Well, the truth is, that story goes back a long way. During the times of the British Empire, London became something like the nerve center of the global economy, a status that favored the development of a huge financial industry. For example, it was in this city that the world's first investment funds emerged in the second half of the 19th century. However, despite the empire falling, the city kept its prominence. To explain this, we can find three major turning points. The first of these took place in the late 1950s. At that time, European banks were beginning to be overflowing with dollars. The North American giant was gobbling up a good chunk of the world's production and in exchange was handing over Uncle Sam's banknotes.
Well, all this abundant availability of funds, and the fact that British regulators decided not to interfere in dollar-denominated transactions between foreign players, led to the birth of the Euro-dollar market in London. A huge market for financing and the exchange of dollars that takes place outside the United States, and therefore is not subject to the supervision of the Federal Reserve or its cash requirements, nor to any guarantee on deposits, or anything of the sort. We are, therefore, talking about a much freer and cheaper market. In this way, the Euro bond market grew to become one of the pillars of the global financial system. And yes, London became the main Euro bond center in the world. If you want financing in dollars, it may even be easier to get them in the British market than in the United States. <laughs> The second turning point had to do with decolonization. The fall of the British Empire left many small territories scattered around the world. Territories that, in some cases, despite their newfound autonomy, retained their political and economic ties with the metropolis. We are talking about places like the Cayman Islands, Bermuda, and the Virgin Islands. Places that, in order to make money, had opted to become important offshore financial centers. We are talking about places that guarantee low taxes, high legal security, and conditions of anonymity. Well, thanks precisely to their ties with the metropolis, much of their activity is channeled and managed precisely through London. And finally, the third turning point came during the Thatcher era, when exchange controls and a large part of the financial regulations that existed at the time were abolished. This policy was a real boost for a city that has continued to grow ever since. However, Brexit unleashed the storm. When on 23rd of June 2016, British citizens voted to leave the European Union, the foundations of the city shook. After the vote, dire predictions began to emerge about the future of this finance industry. The end of London as a leading international financial centre seemed almost a fait accompli. Of course, prophecies do not always come true. Listen up. The Prophecy of Destruction London's role as the financial capital of Europe seemed about to come to an end. It seemed that banks and financial institutions would run for cover and move much of their business to the European Union. Even Madrid set up its own platform to try to get its share of the spoils. And indeed, the first direct consequence of Brexit was that Amsterdam overtook London as the main trading centre in Europe. Of course, the big headlines were not long in coming. Amsterdam overtakes London as Europe's leading stock market. The city, or financial district of London, has lost its historical position as the main enclave for the European market. Overnight, on 1st of January 2021, 6 billion euros, that's 6.8 billion US dollars, of daily trading moved from London to the city of Amsterdam to comply with Brussels regulations. Euronext, the largest stock exchange operator in the European Union, began moving its data centers from Essex to Bergamo, Italy. It looked like the first signs of a sinking ship. In fact, according to estimates by Jupiter, a leading asset manager, the political risk arising from Brexit could have penalized London-listed companies at a 40% discount to their international peers. 40%. However, let's take a moment before passing judgment, because in spite of everything, things look much less dramatic today. The European Union's efforts to reduce its dependence on the United Kingdom does not seem to be paying off at the moment. London remains the main place to raise capital from the old continent, as well as the dominant centre for foreign exchange, insurance and debt trading. And it doesn't look like that any of that is going to change, at least not in the short term. In fact, the London financial industry has had its best year since 2007. In 2021, revenues grew strongly, salaries in the sector increased by almost 20%, and new estimates point to only 7,400 jobs moving to the continent. This represents less than 1% of the jobs generated by the financial industry in the British capital. In addition, we have to bear in mind that whatever may happen with EU regulation, 70% of the city's business does not depend on the European Union. And so, visual politic viewers, today, the massive financial services cluster developed in London seems to have no competition except in New York. And there's even more. No longer bound by European regulation, the British authorities seem to be working on a new plan to improve their competitive position. One example is the so-called dark pools, private systems that allow large blocks of shares to be bought and sold outside 
outside the public stock exchanges. It's a strategy that the EU has tried to clamp down on, but which London seems to be making much more flexible. Of course, the city faces significant challenges, especially when it comes to the stock markets. For example, since 2010, the number of international companies listed in London has fallen from 599 to 370. As a result, the number of companies listed in London has fallen from more than 10% of the world's market capitalization to just over 3%. However, if one thing seems clear, it is that the prophecies failed. And now, if you found this video interesting, don't forget to like and subscribe to Visual Politic. All the best, and I'll see you in the next one.